silence, no response. That is the scariest sound that a gold and silver stacker could ever hear. I'll explain in this video as we explore. You've heard me talk about scams and fraud on this channel for quite a number of years. And you know, a lot of it has to do with common sense. And m most of it doesn't have to do with silence though. That's not the case here. I'm going to be referencing a story here from the Daily Beast, which is not necessarily known to be one of the most trustworthy news sites. But nonetheless, uh, this is something that I think is worthy of discussion here because what they are talking about here is very much true and very scary for precious metal stackers out there. And we're going to hear parts of the story that are going to raise some red flags that, you know, we would think that most people would would uh, question and do their due diligence and research on. But there are other things that people have trust in. And uh, and you would think if you can trust one organization or one individual, then more than likely the other, the company that they're affiliated with should be trustworthy as well. It's not always the case. I'll give you a personal example or two here in the video as we go through and talk about this story. Tyler Gallagher. He had it all. Uh, and from the outside, most people saw that. He had a $3.5 million home in Beverly Hills, two cars, a gorgeous wife, a flourishing business, and one of the hottest uh, sports teams in the country. He started out as a high school dropout who lived in a homeless shelter at the age of 16. He told anyone who would listen about how he took $5,000 and turned it into a successful company investing his clients' retirement accounts into precious metals. Within a decade, he claimed to have done nearly $1 billion in investments and boasted celebrity clients, including Laura Ingram and Lars Larson. His company, which is called Regal Assets, earned top ratings on review sites, and Gallagher himself was a cited expert publishing articles online for Forbes magazine and Rolling Stone Incorporated magazine rated his company as one of the fastest growing in the country, an honor previously bestowed on the likes of Microsoft and Jamba Juice. According to its website, the company had offices in Los Angeles, London, and Dubai, and was the first company licensed to sell cryptocurrency in the Middle East. Today is a milestone on my journey as the CEO of Regal Assets, and I could not be more proud of our unbelievable team, Gallagher said in a press release about the Incorporated 500 announcement to come from Canada and create the success I have with Regal Assets in the heart of the financial collapse truly shows that the American dream is still alive. And then one day, last October in 2022, Tyler Gallagher and his gold, voila, disappeared. Radio silence. Nancy O'Hara first invested with Regal Assets in 2021. The frank, fast-talking 70-year-old had run her own business for more than 20 years, but had lost her motivation to work since her daughter's death from cancer a few years earlier. She was mulling retirement options when she found Regal Assets and its gold IRA, which let customers convert their retirement accounts into metals like gold and silver. The company advertised the program as a hedge against stock market downturns and inflation, said O'Hara. Concerned by talk of a coming recession, figured it was a safe bet. Like any good businesswoman, O'Hara did her research. She read articles that recommended Regal Assets for first-time buyers, she said, and was encouraged by the positive reviews on the company website. But she was most impressed by Gallagher, who featured his membership on the Forbes Financial Council and Rolling Stone Culture Council on his LinkedIn profile, whose articles popped up immediately when she Googled the company. He showed up as a contributor to Forbes. So I thought, well, they're making sure this guy is legit. And uh, so in November in 21, O'Hara transferred almost $500,000, almost a third of her retirement savings to Regal Assets 
An email received O'Hara shared with the Daily Beast confirmed the company would ship five one kilo gold bars, 53 100 ounce silver bars, and 24 Palladium American Eagle coins in her name to a Delaware depository. Yes, Delaware depository. Some of you may remember I did a video about that scam as well, too. Under the custody, custody of Community National Bank, um, O'Hara said the regal salesman, uh, Christian Howard, told her she could expect the bars and coins to arrive at the depository in six to eight weeks. But eight weeks came and went with, without any sign of the metal. In March, O'Hara called Howard, who apologized profusely and passed her along to the company's president, Leia Donoso. Uh, Donoso seemed a little scattered, she said, but promised to help, even offering O'Hara her personal cell phone number. For weeks, O'Hara said Donoso offered up a range of excuses for the tardiness. The depository was backordered. The bank was implementing a new system. The metals were on their way. Eventually, O'Hara received confirmation that about half of the metals had arrived. I just thought it was taking a little while, she said. I thought it was real. But in June, five months after making her purchase, O'Hara received a letter from CMB alerting her that the rest of the metal still had not arrived. At this point, O'Hara said Donoso's excuses were starting to wear thin, and other Regal Asset customers were complaining to the Better Business Bureau that they hadn't received their purchases either. O'Hara opened her own case with the Bureau. She said, but the most they could tell her was that they were, quote, working on it. Finally, in August, O'Hara received a call from Gallagher himself. His tone was jocular, she said, like they were two friends sharing an inside joke. He told her he had fired Donosco and she had been lying to his clients and mixing up their money. Excuses, she said, she struggled to believe. What story did she tell you, he asked, according to O'Hara. Did you hear about the one where her mother died? Gallagher promised her the medals were there, just in another customer's account and that it would take a little while to get it sorted out. I think I was supposed to be impressed that he was calling me, she said. He said, Christian wanted me to call you, so I'll let you know that we're working on it. And that was the last thing O'Hara heard from Gallagher. That is, if it was actually Gallagher. My guess is it probably wasn't with somebody else that he had called. What O'Hara didn't know was that dozens of other Regal Asset customers were experiencing the exact same thing. The Daily Beast spoke to seven customers who say they invested with Regal Assets between 2020 and 2022 and received only some of their investment or none at all and who provided documentation, all told a similar story of their interaction with Regal Assets, an enthusiastic sales pitch, a six-figure investment, months of delays and excuses, and finally over the summer, radio silence. None of them have been able to get in touch with Gallagher since October. The customers are overwhelmingly people in their 60s or 70s who invested money from their retirement accounts through the company's gold IRA program. One couple from North Carolina, a retired auto mechanic and janitor in their 70s, said they lost more than 300 grand, their entire life savings. Another couple, a public school teacher and a military veteran who works for the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, said they pinched pennies for decades to afford a comfortable retirement, then lost half of it with regal assets. The teacher, who asked not to be named, is up for retirement next year, but said she won't be able to afford it now. I never took a vacation, never got a new car. I don't wear fancy clothes, she said. We saved and saved, and now it's gone. There's another, uh, Rick Brest, a 65-year-old from Ohio, invested with Regal in February of 2022, hoping it would protect his savings from inflation. He lost his wife the primary earner to the family as well. Without her, he said, I was trying to take what I did have and make the best of it. And he purchased $103,750 in gold bars on February 16th. Less than half were ever deposited into his account. It's elder abuse, he said. Those guys target people who are trying to look out for their future and looking for a way to guarantee it. It's well beyond an investment scam. It's just flat out theft. At least three lawsuits have been filed against the company in the last year by customers alleging they never received their purchase. One couple, John and Joanne Guberic, claimed they lost more than $624,000 in undelivered coins and gold bars in 2020. A Michigan federal court recently entered the default judgment in their favor for that amount. Stephen Newland claimed he bought 15 grand worth of coins from the company in August of 2018. 
At the time, he alleges he, re he received the confirmation from the depository that his medals were delivered, but this summer, when he asked to withdraw the coins and have them delivered to him personally, Rego Assets allegedly failed to, de to produce them and then stopped answering his calls. When Newland finally got in touch with the depository in October, they told him they had sent the coins to Regal Assets months earlier. So Regal themselves took the money out or took the took the bars and coins out. Crazy. Wow. Matt McAllister, a Waco, Texas police sergeant, had spoke to more than 20 Regal Asset customers and taken formal complaints from 10 of them. You get the idea. Those 10 customers lost more than $4.6 million dollars the largest of which was a $1.6 million investment. The Bernie Madoff thing is the first thing that comes to mind. Seems pretty much like a case like that with gold, or like the recent case with the uh, Sam Freed with FTX. And uh, Regal Assets customers aren't the only people looking for Gallagher. In early 2021, the businessman started an esports team, a group of young adults paid to compete in a video game tournament. So yes, another scam he got involved in. It's crazy. So there's where it is. And apparently he is on the run and uh, with this thing's happening. So um, so this thing where he stole all these things from these people and they have no idea where he is. And uh, it's the story kind of goes on and on here. And right now we don't know where he is. Uh, and I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to find out where this thing goes. It goes into great detail about what has happened with him through the course leading up to this. Uh, but uh, I don't see, there's all these false promises. A lot of red flags here. And it just goes to show you folks that unless they're very well established, you should approach any of these companies with uh, caution, especially if they're newer companies or not well established. I'm not saying that they're all bad, obviously. There are some very good ones. But if you're going to put hundreds of thousands of dollars, just because they may be associated with some big names, be very, very careful. And by the way, there are some legitimate companies, too, that I would never do business with, with just because of the of, of some of the um, some of the uh, customer service, like, for instance, Goldline, high pressure. I would never do business with a company that uh, advertises in the radio or TV. And, and and there's also another one that uh, that I, the name escapes me right now, but uh, uh, it, it's uh, another one of those type of companies. Typically, I avoid do, doing business. They're going to be very overpriced. And um, and I know that one of them offered a free gram of silver um, if you called and got the packet. And uh, they never delivered on the silver. Uh, they just gave me the information packet. When I called about it, and they said, well, you got the information packet. You know, we're not doing that promotion anymore. Well, that's a lie. When you lie about that and, and, and you don't do it, you don't follow through with that promise, that doesn't give me much trust in your company. That's for sure. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's different levels of it, and you have to be very careful, especially if you're going to be storing your precious metals off-site. I did business with another company when I cashed up my IRA. They weren't the very they weren't a very good company. They, they were definitely weren't they were very slow in the delivery of their products and uh and I, I don't even know if they're still in business anymore, but they at least they delivered. But I was kind of nervous there for a while. Um but nonetheless, well established companies are what you want. Um and so we don't know where this uh where this person is right now and uh that's that's unfortunate for those people. So silence is the biggest nightmare that can come true for you if you're dealing with a company where you spend thousands of dollars for precious metals and you don't get them. You know, I always get nervous at times whenever I send uh, money through the mail or 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 uh, pay with a credit card or what have you. At least with credit cards, you have protection. But if you're doing e-check and other things, you got to be careful at times. Uh, you know, make sure that the company is not going to take your money and run. Um, and not only that, will they actually deliver? What could come up? You're always putting your faith and trust out there because when you buy precious metals online, whether it be peer to peer or for any company, legitimate or not, there's always the chance that it could get lost in the mail or not show up. And there's been cases where that's happened. A lot of people get upset and, and, uh, and it may not necessarily be the dealer's fault, but there's always that risk. You know, 
And, and when you think about it, unless and until you have the precious metals in your hand, when you buy precious metals, make no mistake, there is counterparty risk because you are depending on the other party to deliver the metals to you. And then only until you have them in your uh, into 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 your uh, possession, that's when it comes when it becomes single party risk, where you are the one that is responsible for the security of your metals. And by the way, there's something to be said for single party risk as well too. But that's a subject for another video. So there you have it. Just be careful out there, and uh, do your own due diligence. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.